Greetings space engineers. I am here showing you my latest workshop creation. It's a large ship carrier with a lot of defenses and some really cool features. I'm going to do a brief overview. Try to keep this 10 to 15 minutes tops. If you want to see how I built this, see the last video. If you want to see more of the uh, detail into how some of these things work, see the next video. So we'll just go quickly over some of the major features. Um, you can see this is a large ship. It actually has three bays, one in the center for basically for parking a ship, and then this side, the left side, is uh, a repair bay, and then the right side is a garage with a ramp. Up front, you have the full glass cockpit. There's a double layer of glass in the front, um, so it'll allow you to take a few shots before you wind up getting killed. Um, you can see uh, part of a mod here is called the beam drill mod, and there's two two beam drills on the front, and each there's one on each to sell. Uh, when I upload this to the workshop, I'm probably going to pull one of the turrets off so that you'll have a manual drill and an automatic drill. This is basically a mod that lets you automatically drill. As you can see, I've done some test runs here, the holes in the ground. You tell it what order you want, and it will drill up to a certain distance depending on how much power that you have on, on your ship. Very power heavy. And that's one of the reasons why this ship has two large reactors putting out 600 megawatts of power. Um, it also has 10 batteries, two capacitors, um, so it provides well over um, 1.4 gigawatts of power, um, at least in short bursts. Part of the offense of the ship is two large 25 centimeter artillery pieces. This is from a mod, of course, um, and that's paired with two auto cannons. These are um, from the same mod maker, and they're, they're pretty effective weapons, really cool. I have turrets set up, um, two missile turrets on the bottom, two on the top, and I have it set up also so the Gatling turrets, which are all fed by a conveyor system, everything on the ship is done, uh, is fed by conveyors, there's no manual loading at all for anything on this ship. So I have uh, three Gatling turrets in every direction, so no matter which, which way an enemy comes towards this ship, they'll get hit with two missile launchers, three Gatling guns, and I also have a laser turret mod, which are these lasers here. They're very effective at um, taking out things like missiles long range. I have also have three of those in every direction, so essentially eight, you'll get hit by eight turrets in each direction, so um, nothing should be able to get close to the ship without really devastating it. For a little extra fun, and unfortunately this cannot be included in the blueprint because the way blueprints are, they do not support anything past piston or rotors. But for my version, I have this uh, large manual turret, which I built, with three auto cannon cannons and, and two 25 centimeters. And just to give you a quick idea of what this looks like, all I have to do is unlock the rotor. And I can pick a camera and zoom in. So say there's a target over there on that mountain. I can just zoom in on it. And, you know, if I wanted to waste some ammo, I can shoot that way. In fact, let me go ahead and do that. Auto cannons are kind of cheap. Just to give you an idea. I think these shoot up to a kilometer. And the 25 centimeters shoot up to two kilometers. So it allows you to reach out and touch someone pretty quickly. And to be able to zoom in with the camera is, is obviously a very good advantage for long distance shooting. On top of the ship I have four connector ports, one at each corner, and I put the corner specifically to avoid the giant turret, and also because these uh, Gatling turrets are known to not see ships of your own and shoot them. So uh, that's why I put a lot of the armory in the middle, or a lot of the offense in the middle. Um, so the big red glowing circle of blinking lights is basically a reminder, don't ever park your ship there. And it's not even a good idea to stand there during battle. Uh, so always park on the corners. These are all, of course, connected, uh, connected to the conveyor system on the ship. 
I have four moisture evaporators installed. This is also a mod. It pulls ice. If you're on a planetoid with any atmosphere, it, it basically pulls moisture out of the atmosphere and converts it to ice for you. So it's an easy way to get some ice without um, doing a lot of digging. It also has two upgrades, which you can't see, uh, modules installed on the bottom for uh, effectiveness, I believe. And of course, you have your standard air vent for when you're on an atmosphere planet and if you have the doors closed and uh, two oxygen farms, which I just threw in last minute because there was space for them, and, and heck, why not have a, have a tiny bit of O2 build up in your tanks. This does have one oxygen tank, and it is a fully pressurized system, except for the garage. And obviously, you see why. Um, again, something else is not going to be included in, in the workshop because it is supported by a piston and rotor, is this awesome ramp, ramp system. Basically, it's a ramp piston. I'll show you quickly how that works. Basically, you have to unlock the, the ramp first. Now, the piston is all the way out, but it has a piston that brings the whole ramp in and out, so it brings it closer or further away to the ship, and then the ramp itself, which hopefully doesn't take the front of my truck off. Okay. So this side is the only side that is not pressurized, and that's for obvious reasons, because that can't be sealed up. There's just no way to do it. have a hole that big with the airlocks that are given in the game. I'm sure there's some mods that provide that. But uh, This first button here will seal the top, and really that's just um, to prevent gunfire. If you're, getting, if you're getting attacked from behind, you don't want gunfire to come in and start destroying these uh, conveyors. So I just put that in for, as an extra. And once the ramp is up, you want to lock it again with this key. And really, you would actually use the piston and pull it in close. You can see it pulls the whole ramp in closely. It kind of gets rid of, kind of gets rid of the gaps, so you can't shoot through it. Now, it's unfortunate. This is uh, something you'll have to add yourself. It's very easy to do. You just. Um, I'm not sure how the blueprint works, if it includes the piston, or if it's just going to be an empty space. But in any case, there's a lot, there's under this, uh, heavy, there's a couple heavy blocks protecting it from the bottom. But you just put a large piston in there, and then you hit out the rotor to it. And then, uh, after that, you just, you basically, these are just ramps turned upside down. That's the, the edge you see at the bottom, which, at a 30 degree angle, and that's what you want, 30 degree angle matches perfectly with flat with the ground, so you can drive any vehicle right up it. And for, um, for this part here, I used heavy armor, uh, rounded heavy armor. That's just to make that transition bump a little easier for those smaller wheels. But if you're running a, a lighter vehicle or a vehicle with larger wheels, it might not be a problem. But um, super easy to do. You can add that ramp in a couple of minutes yourself. It's no big deal. Uh, also at the back of this bay, and this is actually copied on each nacelle. We have a gravity generator, which the gravity generator is just for this side. And I, I did that on purpose. There's one here, one in the middle, one on the far end, so that um, so that there's not a bunch of gravity in the middle of space just by making a one giant cube. I'd rather have rectangles that are more or less uh, match the, the floor, floor space. So you're not like you know, a few blocks away from the ship and you have gravity in space. It's just kind of weird. Large cargo container, large reactor. This is uh, this beacon is actually a radar. It's a radar mod that allows you to scan up to 50 kilometers and find ships, like derelict ships. It'll scan enemy ships and find them, even if they're powered down. Um, it also will find asteroids. I have it set by default to ignore asteroids and only scan beyond 200 meters, because anything less than that, you'll start picking up your own ship. Uh, four gyros on each side, and then there's four more in the center for a total of 12. I believe 12. It might be 11. Connector at the top, that's specifically for my truck, so when I pull it up here, I can connect it to the ship and transfer inventories. Um, you may want to move move that or put a conveyor in the bottom for your own use, whatever you want to do. This is a fully censored airlock system, so the doors will open and close as you go through automatically. You don't have to open the doors manually. I did that with every every automatic door on the ship except this one. But this is just a single door uh, simply because 
both sides are supposed to be pressurized at the same time anyway, so really that's just a door to have a door there. In case you do want to just pressurize the center for some reason, or if you have a blowout from battle damage. Um, I know the pressurized system here is in the game is buggy, um, but I still like to implement it anyway. I think it's just a good build to have, especially on a, on a large ship. Airlocks on both sides. These are 3 by 2 which will allow you to drive small vehicles or fly small vehicles. Say you want to drive something up the ramp, I do have a couple of um, small wheeled vehicles. Drive it up the ramp. You can drive it up the ramp through the door to a connector or over here to the repair bay. And I'll get to that in a moment. This is actually a demonstration for you. This is basically the command center, industrial center of the ship. Um, you can see I have installed the LCD mod which gives you a full status update of all the stuff that you have on your ship. Um, one screen for ores, one for ingots, one for components. Uh, this ship here is all about what's going on. Um, status of your hydrogen oxygen tanks. There's two hydrogen tanks, one on each nacelle. Oxygen tank, which is right here in the middle. Um, gives you a status of uranium in both reactors. Gives you a status of how much ice you have on board in your oxygen generators gives you status of your batteries plus capacitors. There's um, 30 megawatts worth of batteries plus these two capacitors, which are a mod up here, the green lights. Um, they both put out 300 megawatts or 310 megawatts, I think it is, each. So it'll give you a short burst of power up to 620 megawatts for about 10 seconds. Then beyond that, um, they need to be recharged, which they'll do automatically. But that's basically so that I can run the large drills um, do a bunch of assembly, refinery, uh, a whole bunch of stuff at the same time without without hitting a, a wall of power, right? So we do have 10 batteries, large battery bank, which allows you to basically for 15, 20 minutes run uh, up to 1.21 gigawatts. Um, but the total power of the system right now is at 1.4 gigawatts. So you can see that at the very bottom power is how much power we're using right now out of the total. So right now it's less than uh, a megawatt. This tells you the amount, the second line from the bottom tells you the amount of battery power you're using. This tells you the amount of reactor power you're using. This of course is the status of your drop drive which is fully charged. This tells you how long uh, power time you have based on the amount of uranium in your reactors which this is usually says zero uh, because the, the uranium in the reactors are constantly topping off at 80 charge time or the charge time for your batteries or the run time for your batteries. This, this will change depending on the status of your batteries. This screen here is for any system damage. If you have any damaged systems on the ship, it will um, show up here in red. This is just an extra panel that I put in here that I'm going to do something with later. Um, all these buttons are basically the closest the door, um, the button closest to the door actually controls that door. So in this case, that controls that. And on the other side, it's button number four which is closest to the door, as you see. So I just pick whatever button's closest to the door in case you're walking by and you want to open or close the door. So pretty simple. And I kept that standard throughout the entire ship. Uh, there's one medical bay, so you can keep yourself charged up or respawn here. Not a, not a problem. I do have a door going to the bottom of the ship and door up here going to the top of the ship. Um, they're both pressurized, double pressurized doors, so a lot of you in the room is pressurized, which I'm not going to do in this demo. As you see, my oxygen is pretty low. I'm not going to use the rest of my ice for, for the demonstration. I kind of need that for other stuff. Um, so there are four conveyor ports on the top, or four connector ports, I should say, on top, one in each corner. There's one here in the floor, so when you have your ship, which I park my red ship out there in here, connected to the conveyor, so it's part of the network. Then I have two additional connector ports here uh, in the repair bay, plus a lift, which unfortunately this will not be included in the blueprint because it's a piston. I can show you how it works anyway. And then there's one connector in front, which is specifically used for a small wheeled vehicle, but in space you can pretty much use it for anything. Or if you have a small ship, you can probably still hook it up to this. I have a small wheeled vehicle um, that is connected to this conveyor port on the bottom. And this um, miner ship is basically for scratching ice or snow off a surface of planets and refilling the ice on the ship. So 
You can collect a lot of ice and snow this way. If you've never tried it, build a little wheeled vehicle with a drill in the front and just drive around for a few minutes, and boom, you'll have like 300k of ice in, in your in your uh, inventory. It's much better than trying to fly a ship around because, as, you, as we all know, ice is very heavy, and you need a pretty hefty ship if you want to be able to fly a lot of ice around. So I found using that car, if I can find some ice or snow, like snow on the mountaintop, or ice at the poles, or uh, the Europa moon, works great. Now this side over here is, uh, there are two panels for Talvin's inventory mod, which is, runs this whole station, basically. Um, I have everything so that it auto-sorts into the two large containers. Um, by default, these are the quotas that are set up. You can change this in the programming code. If you want different quotas, it's based on a percentage of how much stuff you have. So what it does is it will actually tell the refineries to refine or refine whatever ore is in most demand for your system. Say you have multiple ores, which I don't have any right now that are that are being processed, but where it says REF, there will be a number of refineries next to each one of these depending on what the system's working on. And this also is a quota system for, um, for your components too, which gives you recommendations on how much of these that you should have. Now, of course, this is just recommendations. You can change that. I kind of go by this over here, which is more or less how many of these things I want to have on in stock at all, at all times. Um, and like I said, this is run by Talden's inventory mod. See the large cargo containers that I have? They actually have these code in here which tells it um, what to store. Like this one large container st stores all the ore and ingots in the facility. So if I want to see quickly, like, it automatically, so if you go to production, and this has four assemblers, fully upgraded assemblers, pick the assembler one with the asterisk next to it, and then that way when you process, it automatically will feed it to the other assemblers. And then the output will automatically get sucked from here and placed into your, see, it'll get placed into your main cargo. And these small containers here, basically they're a um, supply to each one of the bays. So say you're doing something over here and you need some, some steel plate. Well, instead of running all the way over to the large cargo container on the other side of the ship, you just go here and, and it keeps 100 of everything in here and I think 600 steel. So. I can just take, say I need to take 200 steel, watch it'll fill itself back up to 600, see just like that. It just takes it from the main inventory of the, of the uh, large cargo container. And this is identical, this one does the same thing, um, if I want to take say 100 of those and 100 of that, it'll just automatically top them off the best it can as long as you have the materials, like in this case I don't have 500 construction on site, so I'll only put 442 in there. And I had this set up so you can access it from all three sides. In case you're doing something over here, some build over here, you need some stuff, it's as easy as clicking on that instead of going up to that one. Because this one up here is your main cargo container for your um, components. Back here, again, is another large reactor, another air vent for our, um, gyros and the antenna for the ship. Like I said before, this has four assemblers, it has three refineries, they're all fully upgraded with max out modules, so you don't have to do any upgrades or anything like that. It's all tucked up back here um, behind the jump drive, and yes, of course, this has a jump drive. It's a single jump drive, but there's so much battery power that um, if you don't mind waiting five minutes between jumps, uh, it can get you where you need to go. All the I left a corridor up here not just to get to the ceiling or get to the roof, but um, so that you can access anything here if it gets damaged. I try to use conveyor tubes with the lights on it so that you know if something in here would get damaged, what needs to be fixed. See, there's green lights on everything that tell you is it working or not. So you can easily come up here and do uh, minor repairs if needed, hopefully not major repairs. That's why I put most of the sensitive stuff right here in the center. Like all this stuff here you do not want to ever lose because you lose all the programming with it too. Like all the code here, 
controls, like all that code controls what shows up on that panel. So you really don't want to lose this panel because then you wouldn't be able to get that info back without programming it back in. This is just a note board. Um, I keep my own notes up here, like how much ice it takes to top off the tanks to 100%, because I'm going to try to use, I'm going to try to write my own script that will down here display uh, how much, uh, how many minutes of propulsion that I have on the amount of ice I have on board. So I have an idea of how far I can travel um, with the ice on board. Now here is the one of the coolest parts of the ship. This is the cockpit area, which has its own airlock. Uh, this is, uh, again, um, all pressurized. It has its own gravity generator, which is way up here. This is all easy access to repair. That's why I left glass in here, so you can see the green lights. And if you ever need to get back here and repair, you just knock one of these blocks out or knock a glass window out and get back there. Or just use a, a ship with a welder. You can easily fly a ship with a welder through the door and get it in here. Um, airlocks on both sides go into the nacelles. You can see they're just automated air airlocks into uh, to that side or this side. You don't have to click any buttons, it just takes you right through. These doors here are instant access to the outside, so if you need to go outside the ship from the cockpit to do anything, repairs, or you just want to fly around with a gun and shoot stuff, um, here you are, you're right outside the ship, no problem. Also, if you want to get on there and drive your vehicle, it's a good, quick way to get into that. We have two cryo chambers for multiplayer compatibility. Even though I just play offline, I still like to have them because they're they're cool to get in and, and recharge. Uh, up front, we have uh, damage panels on each side, which will display any damage on the ship. So when you're in either one of the pilot seats, you can just turn your head and look and see if there's any damage. Also up front, you see I got two LCD panels on the ground, which are only display the first couple of lines that you can see over top of the console. Just the very most critical stuff, like um, how much hydrogen you have, which this is a fully hydrogen-powered ship. It does not have atmospheric engines or ion engines, so all your power comes from ice. So um, hydrogen tank status, ice status, uh, your uranium status, which of course is also vital to keep your systems going. Um, how much charge in your batteries, the amount of power currently output in the system, which is um, important when you're running these drills, because these drills can take up to 600 megawatts, or, or actually they can take gigawatts of power, depending on the distance that you want to drill. And of course the status of the jump drive, which is full right now. So you can do most of everything from the seat, like right now the hotkeys are up for the drills. So um, just a quick example of what the drills look like. Now it's warning me ship fuel's low just because I only have 80 uh, uranium and I'm running both drills. And if I run just one drill, it's not going to give me that. Those are the automated drills. I have them set right now to dig iron, but you can set them to dig whatever you like. Um, I have multiple hotkeys set up. Turn your oxygen gens on or off. Turn your moisture vapor readers on and off. Close or open all the doors. Um, that's vital when you're in a pilot seat and you want to take off. You make sure um, you lose close everything from your seat. You don't have to get up and run around. All the weapons, turn the weapons on and off, control all your turrets, all three sets of turrets have their own hotkeys. Also the last one is radar. I'll give you a quick demonstration of what the radar looks like. I'm going to turn the HUD on for that. It's going to send out a ping and then show you all the debris from battles I had around here. See? Yeah, there's been a lot of fighting going on around here. So um, all those pings are ship debris. If you really wanted to go out there and scrape all that up, you could. But out in the middle of nowhere, this is excellent because it helps you find lost cargo ships and stuff. Excellent mod. I, can, I, I put it in every single ship, so that's why I'm, I also included it in that ship. First set of hotkeys is basically just your engines and um, your landing gear, which I can probably, I'm probably going to put a couple more things in that first bar, just haven't gotten around to it. So that's the main uh, thing for this ship. So you can get an idea of, of what you're getting into here. Oh, I forgot to put a panel there. I just finished this, this thing up the other day, so it's not like I um, had it fully completed yet. 
without, you know, I haven't actually taken it off the ground, I mean. There we go. Did a little rerouting of the conveyor system to allow me to armor up the up front a little bit better. Last but not least is the repair bay. Um, the lift in the floor, like I said, is not will not be included in the blueprint because of the limitations of the game. But that's pretty cool. It allows me to say I want to build a ship, and I want it to be up off the ground and not powered, so I can put a landing gear here. So I'm going to build a ship. I can put a. I right, said so I want. I want it to be a small ship. We're building it in here. I can stick it to that, I can build my blocks on it. So now I can add to this, build the ship, and then as I need um, height to get underneath it, I can just raise that up. It also allows me to get it up to the welders in case I want to automatically build it. So that's just a nice nice addition. I always wanted a piston lift. It's like having a it's like having your own garage, right? Your own mechanics area. There's a lift built into the floor. Now this is uh, the automated welder area, so you can bring a ship in here. And um, those are all piston driven. Piston driven welders that will uh, come in and weld the ship. I'd give a demo of this, but since um, it won't be included, there's really no point. Um, what, it, what it will do is it'll come Probably the blueprint will just have this empty space here or a piston, and then you can add your own if you want to see how this looks. It's basically a piston, a bear, another piston, which connects to the welders themselves. And then I have the welders all hooked up. This obviously all goes to the conveyor system. So um, I had to point the drills in certain directions so that I could get clearance on both sides. If you want to have a full block of clearance over here and a full block over there, so I did set it up with these conveyor tubes like this on the top. The harder thing to do is to get this rotor. You can actually watch the, the how-to, how I built this ship, to see how I got this working. This is a large ship rotor to a small uh, rotor head. And that carries three pistons this way, a piston this way, and then two pistons this way to the rejector, which allows you to put the rejector pretty much anywhere you want. Um, you can raise it up high, you can have it low, back here, back there. And the welders themselves move. Just giving you an idea of what this looks like. So that's all the way up to the top position, which gets it, gets it out of your way if you want to just do some work down here. You get all the space to work with, and that'll stay out of your way. The whole projector thing tucks up into there too if you want to back all that out. And just I have this set up too so you can actually change the speed. Say you're impatient and you want just this thing back here, you can just change the speed with some hotkeys. Right now I have a projector of one of my small welding ships, which I'm going to build here shortly, and because uh, I'm doing some experimentation on the on the uh, some modded welders. So it should just stop right before it gets to the floor. There we go. So the other the other uh, alt keys they control all the pistons for the actual projector itself, and then this controls the you know where you want the projector to to show right left forward left you know all x y and z axis, and then this will allow you to rotate 
so that's why I have all the basically their own rows of keys for each specific function and then when I want to weld I just hit 9 and uh, I can show you that real quick this thing welds really fast So I'm not going to do the complete thing right now, because I got uh, a few other things I want to do before I build this ship completely. But there you have it. That's uh, that's the general overview of the ship. Um, I'm, this thing is run by Taladin's inventory mod, so um, it takes a lot of the micromanagement out of your day. Because what, what you do is when you produce, it just puts everything in containers for you all nice and clean. You don't have to go flying around to different cargo containers all the time to get stuff. You always have a status of everything that you have on board. It's it's great. It's really nice. This will allow you to really get in there. And, and I did put the multiplayer um, support so you can have you know play with your friends. And uh, this is not battle tested yet, but I'm telling you with all the auto cannons and everything on it, um, those parts just don't have a chance. So I hope you enjoy the video. And I hope you, uh, if you're interested, you can download this from the workshop. It'll include the, the basically the ship core um, and not some of the other features, but it will include all the big stuff. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this and check it out.